Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has once again said that it's just war to eliminate Hamas will continue until all the goals are achieved. Netanyahu also ruled out slowing down the onslaught in Gaza, saying it would defeat the purpose of eliminating Hamas. Take a listen. Qatar's Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman Al Thani has a post. Israel stands. He has warned that an entire generation in the Middle East is at the risk of becoming radicalized because of the war in Gaza. Listen in. Seeing these images right now that's coming out of Gaza every day is not just affecting those forces which are in Lebanon, in Yemen, or, or in Iraq, by Iran. but it also affects an entire generation that might be radicalized because of these images and seeing the international community not, respons not responding responsibly to it. Highlighting the unprecedented humanitarian crisis in Gaza, WHO chief has said that the impact of Israel-Hamas conflict on Gaza's healthcare sector has been catastrophic and he has further warned that these unfavorable living conditions might lead to an outbreak of deadly diseases in the besieged strip. But it's stating the obvious to say that the impact of the conflict on health is catastrophic. More than 17,000 people are reported to have died in Gaza, including 7,000 children. And we don't know how many are buried under the rubble of their homes. More than 46,000 injuries have been reported. 1.9 million people have been displaced. Almost the entire population of the Gaza Strip and are looking for shelter anywhere they can find it. But nowhere and no one is safe in Gaza. Netanyahu reportedly told U.S. President Joe Biden in a phone call over the weekend that the IDF's current operation in Khan Yunus will go on for three to four more weeks. And the reports say that the Biden administration is believed to expect that afterward, the fighting in Gaza will become more focused and less intense. It adds that the officials have denied previous reports that Biden set a deadline to wrap up the fighting by the end of the year. A recent study published by an Israeli newspaper has found that Israel's aerial bombing offensive in Gaza is the most indiscriminate in terms of civilian casualties in recent years. The analysis found that in three earlier operations in Gaza from 2012 to 2022, civilian deaths made up about 40% of the total deaths in airstrikes. But in the first three weeks of the current operation, the proportion of civilians killed rose to 61%. In fact, this ratio is significantly higher than the average civilian toll in all the conflicts around the world during the 20th century. Meanwhile, the Israeli army has released a video showing street fighting in northern Gaza's Jabalia. It said that Israeli troops launched a targeted strike on structures where Hamas militants took positions and that many militants were killed in the fighting. In another video that has been released by the IDF, it alleged that Hamas militants beat civilians and stole the humanitarian aid they received from international organizations that was facilitated by Israel. On the other hand, Hamas has released footage showing fighting with Israeli army in Gaza. The video appears to show militants using rocket-propelled grenades to attack armored vehicles. IDF says five of its soldiers died fighting Hamas in the last 24 hours. Ex-IDF chief's nephew has also been killed in Gaza fighting and a day after his son was killed. Meanwhile, the IDF has also announced that the death of a hostage 
at the hands of Hamas. נציגי צה"ל עדכנו הערב את משפחתו של האזרח סער ברוך, זיכרונו לברכה, אשר נחטף ב-7 באוקטובר. סער נרצח בידי ארגון הטרור חמאס. אנחנו עדיין מאמתים ומתחקרים את הפרטים באשר למקום הירצחו. In risks of a war spillover, Yemen's Houthis say they will target ships in Red Sea and route to Israel unless the Gaza Strip receives the food and medicine it needs. The prohibition of the passage of ships heading to the Zionist entity of any nationality. Israel's national security advisor, meanwhile, also indicated that once Hamas is defeated in Gaza, Israel may have to go to war against Hezbollah across the northern border in Lebanon. He said that the situation in the northern border with Lebanon must be changed. And when the day comes, Israel will have no alternative but to impose a new reality if Hezbollah remains a threat 